this has been a great opportunity. Yes, Thank indeed. you. Yes, Thank indeed. God. Thank God. Glory, Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Okay. Holy and gracious God, again we yes, come. Lord. We just thank yes. you, God, for yes, this God. time to share in your word. Open up our understanding, Lord. Yes. Uh, and Lord, allow us to see the treasure of your word yes. so that we can unpack it for everyone that views. Most of all, Lord Jesus, you get the glory. You get all the you honor get the glory. and all the praise. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, amen. Sister Carla, let's go ahead amen. and get it. Yes, okay, amen. Okay, let's look at our lesson for today. Today is August 5th that mm -hmm. this lesson is going to be presented to us. Yes. And... Our subject for today is God's just servant. That's right. Just God's servant. just. We want to underline just. That's right. God just servant. Mm. Because, you know, over the weeks we've been talking about different kinds of leaders, wicked leaders, leaders right. unjust leaders, right. unjust people in general. That's right. Uh, political leaders, religious That's leaders. Right. We found that there was injustice among all these people. That's and some right. of them. Many of them were God's leaders. That's right. So That's today right. we're going to talk about a just servant. A just servant. We're going to talk about a just servant <laughs> That's today. That's good. That's good. Uh, our aim for change is going to be by the end of the lesson, mm -hmm. we will explore the concept of the Messiah. Mm, good. Since the wonder of Jesus' role as servant to the nation. That's right. And imitate Jesus as a servant of God Praise who God. execute justice. That's right. Yes. That's right. Imitate him. I like uh, uh, Reverend Croft always say, we can imitate Jesus, That's but we can't duplicate him. Can't I like duplicate him. <laughs> I like that. Imitate him, but can't I like duplicate him. We can't Hallelujah. duplicate him, but Hallelujah. we are called to imitate him because right. he is our perfect that's right. Uh, example. That's right. That's All right. right. All in right. focus. What we're gonna? You wanna read the in focus I'll for read us today? The in focus today. David Boy worked for five years as a mail sorter for Hearts Distribution Service, a private postal company. David was a hard worker and really enjoyed his job. Mm -hmm. When the senior management position opened in the mail department, David applied for the job and interviewed well. David, I don't know how to say this. But you didn't get the job. David was stunned. He asked Mr. Carter, who received the promotion, Miss Betty Hauser, said Mr. Carter. David couldn't understand. Betty had only been with the company for six months. <laughs> Everyone enjoyed working with David. He was a man of integrity. Betty was just the opposite. She was lazy, did just enough work to get by, and was usually late for work. Several months later, Mr. Carpenter approached David as he was having lunch. May I sit down with you? Asked Mr. Carter. As the two men ate, Mr. Carter told David that Beatty's promotion was political. She has contacts in high places with the, within the company. In fact, Mr. Carter threatened to report her to the board of directors. Four weeks later, David was promoted to senior management. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carter's tenacious attitude and willingness to fight for justice on behalf of David paid off in a positive way. This week, our Bible study guide focused on the servant who provides justice for all people. What has been your reaction to injustice and other negative forces in your life? Mm, that's good. That's a good question. And yeah. I think we ought to spend a little time talking about that. Yes. It says, what has been your reaction to injustice and other negative forces in your life? Right. Now, if I answered that with one word, I would probably say displeasure. Mm, that's good. Displeasure because we have seen just injustice down through the years. Right, right, right. Now, this story talks about injustice that took place mm -hmm. in the workplace. That's right. That's now, right. most of us who've been in the workplace have either experienced this. Yes. Or we have seen somebody else experience this. Right, right. And what, where we see the injustice is because 
this man, David, was qualified That's for right. the promotion. That's right. That's right. And Miss Betty was not qualified. Come on. Come on. But it said that Miss Betty knew somebody in high places. Mm. And have you, if you haven't seen it, you've heard about right. it. Sometimes, if you know somebody in high places, right. you can get to where you don't deserve to come get on, come sometimes. On, come so on, this come is on. what happened in this case. So right. I found this to be very, very interesting because it was injustice mm -hmm. to the man who qualified for the job. Right, right, But he right. didn't get it. But look at his friend. His That's friend right. stood up for him. Stood in the sometimes we wonder... Well, what can I do? Mm. I can't do anything. Right. Well, maybe you can right. because this uh, Mr. Carter uh -huh. stood in the what you call it the gap. In the gap. Actually, he stood up. He knew it was wrong. Right. He stood up for justice, and sometimes we may have to stand up for just injustice when right. we see it. That's right. Because it may pay off in a positive mm -hmm. way. Uh, and I would say when when you look at that, uh, like you say. Um, Disappointed, discouraged, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 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 sometimes when you like him, he worked hard. He did what he was supposed to do. Yes. Uh, he dotted the eyes. He crossed the t's, and then he still doesn't get the promotion. And sometimes it may look or even feels like, man, why is this happening mm -hmm. to me? And we don't know the plan or the future. That's right. Of what's going to happen. That's but God puts us in that position to stand up, to be a voice for the voiceless, to, to speak uh, on behalf. I, and I like looking at it as intercession, mm -hmm. uh, interceding on somebody's on behalf, behalf of, of somebody, somebody else. else. So even when we, we talk about prayer, intercessory prayer, we speak to God about the injustices that's going on in our world. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. And we are supposed to do that because many times when we say, well, I can't do anything about it. Mm. Well, maybe we can. Yeah. So we're looking yeah. at what is our responsibility. That's it. That's it. And even if we, and that would take all day, but just to hit on it, if we look throughout our nation, and especially like when I was growing up. Yes, ma'am. We experience. Mm. So much injustice as a race, right. racial injustice. Yes, and I thank God today that somebody stepped in. Mm. You know, everybody yeah. were not brave like Dr. Right. King and That's many right. of the other leaders. But I thank God today that these leaders mm -hmm. stood up and fought for justice that we may be in a better place. That's right. So Scott, I would say, so, and that's the challenge. When you speak out against injustice, you have to be willing to pay the cost. Oh, it. yes. Because many of them died. That's they, right. They, they, died. Gave, they, they gave, gave their, their life. life. The ultimate sacrifice for justice. justice. For justice. Yes. Yeah. Let's look, let's, let's look at, let's, let's go further in here. Yes, indeed. What the keep in mind verse says, Behold my servant mm -hmm. whom I uphold, mm -hmm. mine elect. Yeah. And whom my soul delighteth, mm. I have kept my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth ju judgment, which is righteous justice. Mm -hmm. He says in in the, in the other translation uh -huh. to the Gentiles. Wow! Not just the Jews, the but the Gentiles, Gentiles also. We'll, we'll talk about that as yes, we go through. Yes, that's good. I that's think good. what we we'll do now. Why don't we read? Uh, the folk of verses. Okay. And the folk of verses will give us uh, the, the, the scriptures that we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Let's look at Isaiah uh, 42 and 1. It says, Behold, whom I uphold my elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flash shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he hath set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord. He that created the heavens 
and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee mm, <laughs> in righteousness yes. and will and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoner prisoners from the prison and them that sat in darkness out of the prison house I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither praise to graven images behold the former things are come to pass and the and the new things do I declare before they spring forth I will tell you of them okay we're yes, going to talk indeed. about that we're going to have to got to. this comes from Isaiah yes the prophet Isaiah mm -hmm. and People, places, and time tell them a little bit about Isaiah. Okay. Let's look at who Isaiah is. Okay. Bearing the name Yahweh is salvation, mm. Isaiah was one of the greatest, mm -hmm. said one of the greatest prophets of his time. Right. He had a vision of God mm -hmm. and was called by God to do God's work. Bringing the nation to repentance in order to save it from a whirlpool of destruction. Mm -hmm. Isaiah came to the people with the message of judgment, but the judgment was tampered with hope. Mm. He ministered for 60 years and prophesied during the reign of five kings. Mm. Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. Uh-huh. He pleaded with the people to turn from their wicked ways. Wow. Mm. Turn back to a loving God who would forgive them and restore them. Right. Isaiah saw the deliverance of Jerusalem from her enemies, the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. Through his prayers, by the intervention of God, Jerusalem was spared from the Assyrians destruction. Right. We remember, we remember, we that. remember that. Yeah, That's right. it That's was right. Israel mm -hmm. uh, that was destroyed. And many of the promises gave through Isaiah have been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's Jesus beautiful. Jesus has fulfilled many of Isaiah prophets. That's right. And, and then when you look at the name, Yahweh is salvation. Yes. Jesus came as our salvation. He came as our salvation. Yeah, that's so key. He, <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. And what we also want to keep in mind that I say a prophecy. Remember we talked about prophets, true prophets, and yes. false prophets? Yes. Isaiah prophecies. We know Isaiah's prophecies came to pass. That's because right. Because Isaiah prophesies. Was it about 700 years before, before right. Jesus yeah, came? Yeah, yeah. Before he came. Before he came. And, and remember we talked about the, the part of the prophecy is that it may not come to pass in your lifetime, but it will come to, come pass. to pass. And this is one of them. This one of them. This is this is this is this is one of them. That's let's it. see. That's it. Let's see a little bit about the background because okay. the background kind of help us Opens to see where we yeah, kind of yeah. see where we are today. Okay. We'll we'll we'll, we'll read through I'll, I'll read some. I'll read I'll read it. Okay. Isaiah 41. It's telling us we're in Isaiah 42, but mm -hmm. it's telling us to go back to Isaiah 41. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 41, it opens with the nation being challenged by God, right. who reminds them of his greatness and power. Mm. Sometimes you need to take a minute and think about how powerful Ooh. and how great God is yes. to help understand how God is going to get get us through this situation. That's right. We can even think about it right now with all what's say, going on. Come on, sister. You know Carter. these lessons are about what's going on right now. Right. Isaiah wrote <laughs> come God on, have mercy. Come on, come on. Seven hundred or so years ago. Prior to. But what he looked forward to was what was going to happen. That's and right. right now we need to think about 
how in this last verse talking about the mm -hmm. power of God, the greatness of God. Come on. Right now so with this virus, come on, on all around us. Come on, Sister Carter. <laughs> we, yes, got, we gotta we gotta think we gotta think beyond our present predicament. Yes. And say, okay, God, I'm gonna come out of this. That's what faith is. That's faith, what faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's prophetic in its own way. <laughs> and what <laughs> make our faith strong uh -huh. about what God can do yes. and will do is knowing what God has already, already done. done. That's right. And this is saying what it's saying. It said, look back in the end of 41 and see God talking about how his power, his wisdom, yeah. and his knowledge. Right. And then it said also in this background um, that it was more than 150 years before Cyrus was mm, born. Before he, before he was born. Before he was born. We're talking about King Cyrus. That's right. Before he even came on the earth. That allowed the Jews to return from Babylon back home. That should help us with our patient, Pastor. Well, you know, <laughs> this is what's key. The prophecy is before it even happens. So here's the key. Those who hear it have to retain it and share it so that when it comes to pass, they know this is this God. Is, this, is, this is It is written. It's written. <laughs> this is what God said. It is written. Um, and, and that is the blessing. Um, so God gives them revelation of their situation. Yes. God gives us, Give us. revelation. Give us. Of our situation. situation. That's it. One other thing I want to say about Cyrus that wasn't even born mm -hmm. when this was written about what he was going to do. Right. Is that he wanted the he wanted the per he was he was king of he was king of Persia. Mm -hmm. He freed God's people who had been captured because of their sins. That's right. And then what what we see happening is he was not a righteous man. No. And we've talked about that from time to time. Mm. Uh, he was he was not a righteous man, and what does that show us about God? God used him mm -hmm. to bless his people and bring him back. That's right. So from that, I pull that God can and He does use anybody to accomplish His plan and His oh, purpose, yeah. doesn't He? See, that, that, that's one of the things where we have to be careful of. Judging the thing before it's time. Mm -hmm. God uses who He will at His will when He wills <laughs> and how and he how He will because it's for His glory. It is so. Nebuchadnezzar taking them into exile was for His will. It was it's for His glory. They did not appreciate. They would not listen. They would not repent. They would not turn around. When Cyrus come to bring them out, it, 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 to release the yoke of bondage, they should have been like, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. But God promised he was going to do it. He yeah. promised. God stands on his promises. His word. God promises he was going to bring them back. He uses, he used the. Uh, their enemies to take them off. You know, Habakkuk was oh, uh, upset about upset right. about that. Right. And he used a wicked. Well, I don't know if he you, he wasn't referred to a wicked king, king but he was not a righteous king. king. Yeah, he was right, not right. a righteous, right. but godly king. That's right. He allowed the godly king to bring them back. Mm -hmm. And I was just so excited about that. I said, you know, God uses. Whoever, right? He uses ordinary people, mm. even kind of you know, yes, tying something else with it. He ordinary uses people. ordinary people to do extraordinary things, yes. And one in particular, there are many, mm. but Mary, the mother of Jesus, was one ordinary little girl, that's right, that's right, that Jesus, that God used mm -hmm. to bring the 
the Son, the Savior, yeah. into the world. That's right. Uh, when we look at when we look at God using ordinary people to do extraordinary things, that is one of the. That's where we see God intervening in humanity. In humanity. Ah, uh, so for His thank purpose. You God. And it's all for His. His purpose. Yes. His purpose. His purpose and his glory. And his glory. Put them together. Can't yeah, separate, can't separate them, can we? No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah, well, there is a lot in here. And, yeah. And let, let's just do this last little paragraph here. Oh, yeah, that's good. Through, though Cyrus would allow the people to return to the promised land because he gave them what they call it an edit. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Eat, eat it so he uh -huh. can go. Uh -huh. Yeah. He to let to let him to let him go back. Uh -huh. Even though he did that, it is only Jesus Christ who can provide God's people with safety, protection, justice, and I stuck a little word in there and right. salvation. And salvation <laughs> that they desperately need. That they desperately. That they desperately need it. So when we when we sort of put the text together, Isaiah is speaking about what the before it happens, but Nehemiah was the one, and Ezra, they were the one who experienced it as it happened. They were there. 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 They, were there. they it, rebuilding the walls, rebuilding the city. Nehemiah up there on that wall come saying, on. "We can't even, we can't come down. We can't come down. Yes. Determined." But they were coming back to That's where right. God brought them. And you know, we look at God and how yeah. they the people turned away from God and he punished them and he brought them back. Mm -hmm. Now, even in the midst of what's going on here, they've been back for a while. Yeah. They've been back long and enough it, to be wicked all over again. And you would you would think after It's a cycle. <laughs> it's a cycle. You would <laughs> That's why they gotta remember remember what the Lord has said. You gotta remember what God has already done. We always say that saying history repeats, repeats itself. itself. It does. It repeats itself. It repeats itself. It's a cycle. Yes. So we have to pay again, even like we talk about the, the COVID nineteen. We gotta pay attention to the seasons and the times and what's going on and ask that question, God, what are you saying now? How are you speaking to How us? are you speaking to me? Mm. Not so much, well, everybody and else right. too, but our question is, God, what are you saying to me? Yeah. What do I need to do? Yes. And you know, I was thinking, I say, this is a good time for self-reflection. Yes. <laughs> Reflection, evaluation. Evaluation. Yeah, yeah. Reflection. Uh-huh. An evaluation mm -hmm. because I'm thinking that when God is not pleased, mm -hmm. things happen yes. to get our attention. Yes. God created us to worship Him and serve Him. That's it. And my appeal to people right now is to examine yourself. Yeah. yeah what right. is it I need to do? Right. What I haven't done. Right. What is it I need to do to please God? In a way that he'll delight in me. That's uh -huh. it. That's it. I, I, I would say even that too, Sister Carter. Uh, we got that reflection, evaluation, and then where's the application? What do I do next? What do I do? What do I do? You know, we we, we I, I love when Solomon say, "Okay, God, we're gonna build this new temple, but what if we mess up? If my people who are called by my name <laughs> will humble themselves." And pray. See my, my face. Then. You got to do that first. Yeah. Seek my face. Then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. But you got some prerequisites. You notice that? Yes, ma'am. Many of God's promises, the promises over here. Uh huh. There is, you call it a prerequisite, <laughs> or you can say there's something that you have to do. Yes. Over here. That's right. And you do what you're supposed to do. Because mm -hmm. God doesn't have any problem fulfilling His promise, yes. but He requires us to do what we're so, supposed to do. Yeah. You you got to have that human. Uh, you got to give your will up. That's right. It's God's will. To say God. Let your will be done. Mm -hmm. I gotta submit 
submit to survive. <laughs> yes, <on>. Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. A few, a few, uh, the last quarter we were talking about mm -hmm. God's promises. Right. And God delivers his promises. Yes. And man sometimes don't. And we talked a lot about, we're talking about what God promised, standing on the promises, promises of God. God. Right, right. Well, are you doing what God told you to do right. in order to receive the promise? That's right. And when I came across delight in the mm, lesson, and we're going we, we, mm. to move on, we're going to move on to that. But when I came across delight, mm -hmm. and we were talking about God's promises, I said, well, one of my promises is, if I delight myself, uh -huh. no, delight yourself well, in the Lord, Lord, that's right, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Right, that's it. I was looking at how I came across delight in this lesson. Uh -huh. I said, that's that's my that's the promise that I'm standing on. Right, right, right. So what I'm working on mm -hmm. is, am I pleasing God? Because mm -hmm. that's what delight is. Yes. Truly pleasing God. Right. Am I pleasing God as I should? Mm. That He'll give me the desires of my, of my heart. Ooh. So we gonna talk about that. Yeah. I think that's in the verse. So okay. let's okay. let's let's let's, let's, let's go back. We've, okay. we've already read the the book of verses. Okay, and uh, we're gonna go and look at. Um, the the lesson breakdown in the in depth section. Okay, we have. Point number one, mm -hmm. a judge to the nation. Mm -hmm. Point number two, a light for the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is 42, one through four. A light to the nation is verses five and six. Mm -hmm. And a hope for the nation in verses eight and nine. All right, I'll read, I'll read those you'll, verses. You'll read. And I'm going to read them from the New Living Translation okay. to give us that, okay. that little, little clarity. clarity. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. Okay. In Isaiah 42, 1 through, one through four. 4. Look at my servant, whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nation. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. Mm -hmm. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wrong. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instruction. Okay. Wow. First four verses. Yes. A judge. A judge. A judge mm. to the nation. Mm. And when we look at those verses, okay, yes. let's talk about let's talk these about verses that. because God is introducing mm. uh, somebody here. Yes. The first verse starts out saying, uh, look at my servant. Look at my servant. Look at my servant. Mm. He doesn't call any name, no. does it? Mm -mm. In the Old Testament, he is concealed. <laughs> In the New Testament, he's revealed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. This is a good example. This good is a exa good example yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Because as Isaiah is introducing, is God through Isaiah mm -hmm. is introducing uh, this this person. He's calling him my servant. Okay. Mm. Later on, it's gonna. Help us to understand who this servant is, right, even right. before even before a name it is called. Right. So he starts out with what this servant is to him, or what he's gonna do mm -hmm. uh, with this servant, mm -hmm. uh, right. how he's gonna uh, support this servant. Right. So let's look at that past okay. and, and and just let's see. He's introducing the servant, mm -hmm. but. We see first that God, when he say, look at my servant or behold my servant, mm -hmm. he says that he's mine elect. Mm. So we see he starts out talking about the servant saying, really what the servant is, the relationship of the servant is to him. Right, right. So you want to you want, you, you help us out with yes, that and what, see what he's, one, he's saying about the servant? Yeah, one of the things in the dynamic of it, and this is what I love about it, he says, behold, this is King James Version, behold my servant whom I uphold my elect. 
in whom my soul delighteth. In New Living Translation said, look at my servant whom I strengthen. Yes. He's my chosen one who pleases me. I put my spirit upon him and he'll bring justice to the nation. So you got that language in both of them that gives you how the Lord feels about his servant. His servant. This is this is somebody special to me. Say he's my he's my, my, my elect. I chose I chose him. him. I picked him. Yeah. I elected him. He's Didn't nobody send him along uh, uh, uh. because that's who they wanted. Right. This is my servant. That's right. Whom I strengthened. That's right. And it means when we look at Jesus mm. and look at God, mm -hmm. you know, our little brain came really just came wrapped uh, 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 around no, no, all no. of who God is and who Jesus is right. because this is God's servant. But the strength he he he, he chose him, uh -huh. and the strength that he has, he gives it to him, mm -hmm. and then he puts his spirit up on him. Right, right. And he will. And he will. And and, and here's the other part: who pleases me? Uh huh. Uh, delighted. Delighted. I, I, like that's, yeah, that's, yeah, I thought that's, 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 that's my word. word. Who pleases me? Uh, and, and, and every time we hear. Uh, Jesus, when he talks about the Father, he said, my, my will is to, to do the will of him who sent me. Yes. To give the Father yes. glory. Who, who pleases me uh, at, the, at the baptism. That's it. This is my beloved son. This is. He said, I put my spirit up on mm. him. Come on. The sitting down go on like a dove. Yes. Come on. Uh, <laughs> John the Baptist says, one coming whose shoes are not worthy to unlatch. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of, of the world. world. And he said, and I come to be baptized come to you. Be, what? And you, when he was baptized, when he was baptized, it came up this, out of the water. Come on. It brings us right back to this verse. That's this is, it. This is who God is talking about. Now, 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 now we go. We, we might, we might, we might have a good shout session right here, Sister Carter. Cyrus is what seven hundred years. Uh, okay. Isaiah, Isaiah seven hundred years. Seven hundred years before that. Before this. Before this. He wrote a hundred and fifty before Cyrus. Cyrus. That's it. Before, before Cyrus, Cyrus sent him back. That in. Good, yeah. So you got one hundred fifty for Cyrus. You got seven hundred before Christ. Man, Isaiah was seeing some stuff. Isaiah was seeing some stuff. He, and and to to share it in a way that as we look back, yes, God, we can see what God was doing. Yes, as we look back, we can see how God was working through Isaiah to speak to the children of Israel. Yes. Um. Uh, I, I I like how um oh my goodness I want to say it was um Doctor Jasper Williams oh okay he was saying is not foretelling it's forth telling it sure is I'm not foretelling I'm not telling it for a purpose or telling it for Prophecy is forth telling us this it's, is what's coming forth. You don't see it yet, but it's coming forth. And shouldn't that help our patience yeah. to know that God may not going to do what he said he was going to do today uh -huh. or tomorrow? Come on. Might not even be in your lifetime. Maybe might not be in your lifetime. Your, 700 years. The promise, the promise is not just for you, but it's for the generations that follow you. Said. For your people. For your people. For your people. Yeah, yeah. And when it says, you just mentioned about when John baptized Jesus, he came up out of the water. Mm -hmm. The spirit spoke from voice, yeah. spoke from heaven. Yeah. In my soul. Wasn't it, didn't it set up on his shoulders the like a dove? The spirit descended down like, like a, a dove. dove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the voice mm -hmm. from heaven said, in my son. I'm pleased. There this is. says when he's talking about this servant, he said, whom I strengthen, 
He is my chosen one. He pleases me. me. That's right. That's right. And that's a, that should be our ongoing effort. To please the Lord. How can I please God? Mm. It's good. God delights yeah. in us. That's right. That's right. When we please Him. When we please Him. Yes, Lord. We please Him. Yes, Lord. Uh, when, we, when we look at uh, the point one, the judge to the nations, uh, it says in, I think that second paragraph, it says, though many Jewish scholars traditionally identify the servant as the nation of Israel, as Christians, we see the suffering servant, a prophecy of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who is the true Israel, faithfully fulfilling all the law that God gave Israel yes. to, make, to make it holy. Written on behalf of God, Isaiah declared that God would send his servant whom he would uphold. Isaiah identifies the servant as a let, referring to the chosen one who was appointed by God for a specific task and purpose. Yes. Thus the servant is the one whom the Father delighteth in. The prophecy declares that the servant would neither cry nor lift up no cause his voice to be heard in the street. That is, he will not have to cry out to be heard mm -hmm. and obeyed. The servant would be meek and humble, not breaking a bruised reed or putting out a smoking flask. The servant would completely embody gentleness and yet righteous judgment. Isaiah reminded us that the Messiah will neither fail in his ministry, nor will he get discouraged because the work is because there is work yet to be done. God's righteous judgment has not fully been implemented in the earth. Until the second coming, the kingdom of God is expanding as God's people are in the world ministering to others and bringing them into a right relationship with the Father. Does that mean that his work, mm -hmm. Jesus is gone. He was mm -hmm. here. Yes. He had a great ministry. Yes. So this is telling us that his ministry, until he comes back again, right. his ministry is still going on. His ministry going on. And, and we are the people. We are the ones right. who are to continue his ministry. It's going through us. And it say until he come back again. Yes, indeed. His going. ministry shall Continue. Yes. So, so the work of Christ that He did on the cross, bringing us salvation, it still goes on still today. Going on. The blood still work. <laughs> salvation is still real. God is still working. He is on our behalf. On our behalf, and yes. He has given us the opportunity to help with His mission. That's right. So now we become. Uh, Partners <laughs> and laborers and co-laborers in, in, in Christ. Yeah. You know, it was another thing you 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 read that when you was reading that um, a judge to the nation. Mm -hmm. It talked about it. They gave a description mm. of the of the servant. Right. Now we know what a servant is. Yes. A servant is one who serves. That's right. One who works. That's right. For the master. That's right. Good. And and that's who is being described here is the servant of God, the servant that God called. That's right. But notice the kind of characteristics the mm. servant had. Yeah, yeah. And and that's a good, you know, good example for us today. Yes. How we're supposed to be, what kind of yeah. attitude we're Ooh. supposed to, to have. It says that the servant was meek mm -hmm. and humble. Yes. Now he's going into the world as the Messiah, mm -hmm. but he's going in as a servant. Servant, servant. servant. Now, when he come back, he's mm -hmm. not coming back as a servant. No, he's not coming back. But as when a he servant. came into the world the first time, he came mm -hmm. as a servant. Mm -hmm. He was humble. He was quiet. 
Mm -hmm. He wasn't loud. He didn't have to speak loud to be heard. Right. When he rode into Jerusalem, he rode into Jerusalem on that little cumber uh, beast. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. So to help us know that because we belong to God, mm. we have to have a humble, humble, a humble spirit. Yeah. Not hurting. I think that that verse reads and what it really means when mm -hmm. he's talking about breaking a, a, a reed. reed. He's really yeah. saying that something that is bruised. Mm -hmm. oh. Jesus is going to have so much compassion that he's not going to hurt that, but he's going to mm -hmm. take care of and heal it, yeah. and heal it yeah. rather than bruise or break. Right. And uh, even the other part of that, putting out a smoking flask. When it's already smoking, that means it's going out it's anyway. Going out. So he said he's not going to snuff it out. No. And I, I love the other part. He embodied gentleness. Yes, Lord. Gentleness. He one gave the, us an example. He's the, our perfect yeah. example. Can we be gentle with one another? Uh -uh. Mm. <laughs> Can we be gentle? And, and in spite of the situations and circumstances that we face in life, can we be gentle? Can we be gentle? Yeah. Can we un be understanding? Yeah. But one of the things, mm -hmm. if we have the love of God yeah. the way we're supposed to have it, that's right. We can do all the things that God oh, requires yeah. us to do. That's right. That's right. Because love helps us mm -hmm. to do it. When we love, that's right. Like what was it the all the commandments mm -hmm. were, were those the, the two commandments. That's right. The first two commandments: love, love the, the Lord, Lord thy God. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With all love your heart, your, soul, and mind, uh -huh. love your neighbor as, you, as yourself. That's right. If we do that, then we will take care of people. That's we right. won't hurt people. We'll, we'll help people. And, and and sister Carl, when you think about that, what we're embodying. Uh, when we talk about gentleness, it, it made me think about the fruit of spirits. <laughs> you know, he, this is what he wants us to have. This is what he wants he, us to, to have. To deposit in us. So when we accept Jesus, we accept the seed of what he yes. gives us. And it brings forth the fruit out of our lives. Yes. You got to have a seed. The seed you got to have a seed. The seed of faith. And it produces the fruit. The fruit of the, the spirit, spirit in our life. So we have to have the spirit in our life. Yes. To produce. Yes. What is right and what is what is righteous. That's right. That's righteous. And that yet the righteous judgment. That righteous judgment. Right. And, and that stands up against injustice. It does. It says that uh, he shall bring forth. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the, the servant. Yes. He shall bring forth. True uh, judgment unto truth. Mm. That's that's the way you talk. Mm -hmm. And it simply shows the manner in which he was established. He will establish judgment. The servant will get it right. That's right. The judgment will be righteous. Mm. Yes, the Lord brings judgment. Yes, yes. We yes. know he does. Yes, yes, yes. He's judged. He's sent his people all the way down into captivity and that's just an example that mm -hmm. we're familiar with in, right, right. In, in the Old Testament but his judgment is fair that's right you know some people do you injustice just, but, right. but it's, not fair. it's not fair they just right. do they do you injustice do you just to be yeah just to do you wrong right but God is not like that mm. if God punishes mm. It's a, righteous it's a righteous punishment. punishment. You deserve it's a, it. It's a punishment you have coming. <laughs> Whom the Lord loveth, he also chest. He does. And when you when you share about that, it made me think about uh, the righteous judgment. Because in, in, in Bible study, I dealt with the woman caught in adultery by herself. <laughs> yes, I remember. So they, they, wanted mm -hmm. to, they wanted to be injured. They wanted to treat her unjustly. The, yes, the law said to stone her and to kill her. But when they brought her before Jesus, Jesus, he said, okay, yeah, that, that could be the verdict, stone her. But he says, no, uh, ye who have no sin, cast the first cast stone. The first stone. And, and then he asked her, where are your accusers? And she said, they're all gone. And he said, neither do I. Go and sin no Go more. Go and sin no more. Righteous, just. Righteous justice. Righteous justice. Righteous justice. justice. Now, judgment would have said, just go on and kill her. Mm -hmm. Just go on and stone her. But righteous, righteous judgment, 
said be fair. Be fair. I think the, the simplest word that we can find <laughs> I like that for Chicago. justice is just do just be fair. Mm -hmm. Be fair. Do what's do what's right. right. Do the right thing. Do the right. That's uh -huh. it. That's it. That, oh, I love it. That really will sum up justice. Yes. And that's another thing that we need to take mm. a look at ourselves mm. about. Am I mm -hmm. the things that I do, the way I treat mm -hmm. people, the way I treat God? Mm. Am I being just? Yes. Right. 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 A good look at that's self. Right. Am I? Am I being? Am I being just? And because and it's required that, of us. That's that reflective piece. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, we we share. In this time, we ought to be reflecting on what God is doing in our life. And we ought to be able to identify some of those character traits. We should. That are not like God. And say, God, we need to work on that. Help me. Help me. Everybody need to work on yeah, right, Everybody right. need to work right. on so, self sometimes. So, so, so God, I got, I got, I got to use uh, Brother Carter's. Got to hit the help me button. <laughs> help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Yes, it is. Okay, well, let's look Let's look at our, our next point for okay. discussion. It says a light for the nation. A light for the nation. A light for the nation. You That's, want me to read that? Go right ahead. That's five through seven. Okay, light for the nation uh, covers verses five through seven. Mm -hmm. Isaiah writes that this is God, mm. the one who made the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Look at God. Mm. And all aspects of creation. Isaiah takes his declaration from Genesis 1, mm -hmm. where scripture affirms that God not only put his seal of approval upon the creation, but he also but also his spirit into the human being so that they may be the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to read more about that, it's in Genesis 1, 27 through 2, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. This is the God who raised up the servant in righteousness. Talking about the servant again. That's right. The word righteousness encompasses integrity, moral honesty, purity, and having a right heart before God. Mm. The Messiah was given the assignment to come to the creation. Mm -hmm. Listen at this. Okay. Mm. To speak righteousness into the lives of people. Mm -hmm. God would hold his hand and keep him. Mm -hmm. It's in verse 6. Yes. Thus the Messiah was the fulfillment of God's covenant for the Jews and the light for the Gentiles who trust him. Mm, the good. word covenant has to do with a treaty or an alliance of friendship that is accompanied by signs and solemn oath, and it is sealed by a relationship between two parties. Mm -hmm. Despite their rebellion, God is Israel's friend. He loves his people, and he has sent his servant to bring, him, bring them back to him. At the same time, God loves the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Those who are not Jacob's descendants. Praise God. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of those prophecies for Christians. Jesus Christ came so that he might destroy the work of the enemy. 1 John 3 and 8. And bring light to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Acts 26, 23. He has come to bring illumination, which is light, and revelation to those who will receive him. Amen. That Amen. says a lot. That let's see lot. what we can yeah. let's see what we can pull out of we can all that. that. Yeah. Yes. First we want to look at the fact that Isaiah is writing uh that what God did. That's right. That's God right. made the heavens, God made the earth, mm -hmm. God made all in it. God all the creation. God made man yeah. and then he breathed mm. his spirit into man yeah. so that man would have the images. Mm -hmm. We the image. Because he told somebody. Yeah. In, <laughs> we're image bearers. <laughs> we bear the image of God. And down here where it said Jesus was invited to the creation. No, mm -hmm. the servant. The servant. We call him Jesus. Jesus, right, right. The servant was invited. invited to the creation. That really can 
how you say it, Pastor? Uh -huh. Mess your mind Mess up because you're trying to figure this out. Uh -huh. God is uh, in control of creation. Uh -huh. The servant is invited, mm -hmm. and we find out later that the servant created all things. That's right. Where is that? That's in that's First that, that's in, in John. That's in one. John one. That's John one. Well, see here, here. Here's where we when we talk about the triuneness of God. Yes, that's that's the Trinity of God. Uh, when when God made everything else, let there be light. Let there, there, there let there be water. Let there be air. Let there be the sun. Let there be the moon. Yes. He he would yes. say that. But when he got the man, he said, "Let, let us, us," which which brings plurality. Yes. Um, and we look at it as the Godhead, God the Father, Father God the Son, and God, God the Holy Spirit. Spirit. They were all there Together. at creation. All get, they were all there at creation. Mm -hmm. They were all there at Jesus' baptism. Yes, yes. They were all there at the transfiguration. Yes, they all there. They all there. Uh -huh. They inseparable. That's right. Inseparable. Sometimes we struggle with is this about God? Is this about Jesus? Right. It's about God. It's about well, what, 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 what God. we what we what we struggle with is we got to understand His function at the time. Amen. At the beginning, He was the Creator. In Christ, He was the Redeemer. Yes. In the Holy Spirit, He's our Preserver. Right now. Right now. Preserving us <laughs> right now. How you making it through 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 this, Pastor Cal? How you making it through COVID nineteen? The Holy Spirit is Holy preserving Spirit me. Holy Spirit is preserving me. I'm trusting Him. Yes, I'm believing Lord, Him. Yes, it's Lord, in yes, His yes. hands. And you notice to help us with that, the three, mm -hmm. the Trinity: God mm -hmm. the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You notice as you study and pay attention. They were, in those instances, they were all together at the same time. Right, 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 right. M many of the times when we're studying, we see God in the forefront. That's right. Usually in the in the Old Testament, we yes. see God is in the forefront. That's it, that's it. Yes. That's it. That's Although it. Jesus is it's there, there, the Holy Spirit is there, God no. is on stage. That's right, that's uh -huh. right, that's right. And in the New Testament, yeah. when Jesus was here on earth, the Gospels, as yeah. Jesus in the Gospels and mm -hmm. whatnot, God the Father was in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Then he said he was going away. Mm -hmm. He was going away. Yeah. That's it. That's he was it. going away. He was going to prepare a place for us. That's and right. then we see now when he went away and sent the comfortable, the Holy Spirit yeah. is in the forefront. That's it. The Holy That's Spirit it. is That's keeping it. us it. right now. That's it. There it is. Ain't that right now? That's right now. <laughs> And, and the Spirit gives us revelation yes. of the Father and of the Son. Yes. Uh, when when Peter and they were walking through Caesarea of Philippi, uh, Jesus asked the question, Who do men say that I am? Some say you're Elijah, some say you one of the other prophets. What but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, Jesus says something important. My Father has not revealed, but the uh, flesh and blood have not revealed yeah, this unto you. you, but my Father who is in heaven. Yes, Lord. That's it. That's well, it. The Father got to still operate while the, the Son. The Father is still, still operating. operating. That's why you can't separate them. Don't even try. Don't try to separate them. Don't, even, don't, try to don't separate. even try to figure and, out who and, is Jesus and who is God and, and who is the Holy Spirit. Don't try. And when we look at Isaiah looking at this, and he's looking uh, from his vantage point mm -hmm. to seeing who Jesus is going to be. So again, he's 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 forth telling this is what's going to happen. He's going to be righteous. He has the seal of approval on him. Yes. He, he's the Messiah. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. You, 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 he got a covenant with him. You got to understand his relationship with the Father. And when you understand that dynamic, that's why uh, when we look at it, the Jews missed him because he didn't come like they, they imagined. expected him to come. Or expected him to that's come. Right. They wanted a king and a ruler, but he came humble. 
He came gentle. He came showing love yes, and care did. and concern. He came like a shepherd looking for his sheep instead of a king looking for his throne. <laughs> and Pastor, I was looking at that uh, <laughs> uh, one, one evening and, I, and I, was, I, was, I was just saying, I said, now, Isaiah wrote mm -hmm. long before it happened what the Messiah was going to be like. Mm -hmm. Did they not they were looking for something different. Did they not know? Did they not know the word? Maybe they didn't. Well, well, this is this is the challenge of it. Uh, again, you can know the word. <laughs> yes. But then there's a difference when you got a relationship with the word. Mm -hmm. So they knew it, had knowledge, but they didn't have a relationship with the word. And they knew what they wanted. They wanted something that God had mm -hmm. even promised them. That's right. God he never said, promised I, he them a Messiah send, like that. I, I, he said, all he said, I'm sending you a Messiah. We look at it right uh -huh, in the text. Uh -huh. This is what he said he sent them. And when I was reading this, that's why I said, I said, well, they were looking for a Messiah, a king. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always say uh, we envision a king on a big uh Mm -hmm. what, what White horse stallion. stallion coming on yeah. in, you know. But conquering. God never told them they were gonna get a Messiah like that. But that's what they wanted. They, they wanted, and, and here's the challenge of that: because of the Davidic covenant, when God says the scepter won't leave the lineage of David, so they wanted a king like David. Mm -hmm. They wanted a king. Uh, that when he ride in, uh, Saul has killed his thousand, David has killed his yes. tens of thousands. Yes. That's what they wanted, but not knowing that's not what God wanted. God, they forgot who was their first ruler. They forgot. God was their first yes. ruler. He let them have kings. But what happened? But you know, when we in in talking about this, when they uh -huh. were expecting something that God did not promise them. Mm -hmm. I think even us sometimes when we don't really understand what the word has said, mm -hmm. that's how we get the misunderstanding yes. of what and expecting something from God that he never promised. That he didn't promise you. Yes. So that's why we say it's so important to it's it's, it's to important. Know. Uh and, and that's why when we when we get the word and we when you know we study the word we also have to line up God's will, God's word, mm -hmm. God's way. Uh, even like in this time now, and, and this is, I was having this conversation yeah, we, a little bit earlier. We need to uh, talk about now. When we talk about uh, as believers going through COVID-19, we shouldn't be afraid no way. We shouldn't be afraid. Because it's win-win for us. If I live, it's for Christ. That's what Paul said. He did. If I die, it's for, it's it's for Christ. It's gain. <laughs> it's for Christ. So whether I live or whether I die, it's unto the Lord. That's right. That's right. And we need, Do, you know, we need to we need to hear that over yeah. and over again. We know it, but all of us need that little bit of encouragement. That's right. I try real hard, but we all need to do. We need to encourage us. Mm -hmm. That's right. We need to know what mm -hmm. we need from God, and we need to know that God can provide it. That's and it. we need to stand on it, That's and it. we can be strong. Yes. I've been doing, mm -hmm. and I, I must say, I've mm -hmm. been doing very good mm -hmm. as far as you know, being afraid and whatnot. Cautious, yes. Cautious, yeah. Careful, yes. yes. Well, we're Washing to be. my hands. Yes. 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 Wiping, yes. Wiping down stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as far as feeling afraid, I thought about when I had brain surgery. Mm -hmm. When it was time to go to surgery, I knew I was going. I knew the risk. Mm -hmm. I knew what it what could happen. Right. But I was not afraid. afraid. That's it. And I feel that way now. Concern, yes. yes. You know what could happen, yes. But thank God I'm not stressing mm -mm. and feeling afraid. That's right. See, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. He's given us power. 
He's given us love. He's given us a sound, a sound mind. mind. That's when God operates in our midst. When we, when we pull back to the lesson, it says Jesus came so that he might destroy the work of the enemy, 1 John 3 and 8, and bring light to the Gentiles. He has come to bring illumination and revelation to those who will receive him. That's, that's, that's there it, it is right there. If all I got to do is receive him. And I'm going to get illumination and I'm going to get revelation about my situation. Then I ought to be, be shouting. I ought to be shouting. I ought to be praising God. I ought to be thankful because I got hope. That's why he came. He came. And see, the Jews thought at first that he was coming just for them. Mm -hmm. And it's already a long time ago. It's already <laughs> written uh -huh. that the Messiah was the fulfillment of God's covenant. Yes. Now we know God made a covenant mm -hmm. way back then. That's right. When it started with Abraham somewhere back That's then. That's right. That's right. He made a covenant of what he was going to do. That's right. I'm going to choose. In other words, he was choosing the people mm -hmm. to be an example of. Mm -hmm. To the rest of the world. That's right. Bring light to the rest of the world so the rest of the world could know that he's not an idol. That's like, right. like those idols other are the, right, the other right, gods. Right, right, right. And that they can depend on him because he mm. is God. That's right. So I want you to, I want you to show the mm -hmm. world that. That's right. And then he knew then that the light was not only going to be to mm -hmm. the Jews. Mm -hmm. They knew even then that the light was going to be brought to the Gentiles yeah. also. Yeah. And that goes, when we again, for God so loved the world. That he gave. That he gave his only begotten. And whosoever. Whosoever. There it is. Would believe in him, would not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. To, to them that believe on his name, he gives them the power to become the sons and daughters of God. And he expects us. Us. That's it. To take that light. That's it. And be a light. Oh, yeah. For others. Doesn't he? Yeah, that, take the light and be a light for others. But then we have to realize mm -hmm. that we have to get the light. Mm hmm we have to accept the light. Mm -hmm. We have to get the light of God in us mm -hmm. in order to have a light to shine to help somebody to help somebody else. Either you're going to be a candle or you're going to be a flashlight. Are you a candle or are you a street light? Candles burn out. <laughs> but if you're a street light, you're hooked to a power source. You're hooked to a power source. And when we're hooked to the power oh, source. Oh, that is said so well. We, mm -hmm. we glow. We, we, we keep going. Uh, I, I, well, the, the challenge of missing church now is this. When you go to church and you go to worship, it's it's like your, your battery charger. It charges exactly. you up so that you can share the light. So you can share the light. Because the light doesn't shine. Mm -hmm. Our light shouldn't shine just on Sunday. That's Is right. that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Our light should shine yeah. every, every day. day. Every day. All day. <laughs> on our all workplace. day, oh yeah, every day, and God loved the Gentiles. Yes, yes, just as He loved the Jews. That's right. But like I said, the Jews thought they were special. Mm -hmm. They were not special. Mm -hmm. God didn't love them any better. And and, and here, here here's another part of that. They uh they rejected Him. Yes. They forfeited. Uh -huh. You know, they gave it up. Uh, you know, uh. Because they did not accept him. He said, I came into my own and my own received yeah. me not. Exactly. They pushed me away. But God knew they were going to do that. He me? knew it. So he already had the way planned. Mm -hmm. That would just move. It would start with the Jews. That's right. They going to mess up. Many of them going to deny me. But he had it already set up. That already planned. He just move on. That's right. Move, move on to the Gentiles. Keep, keep going. Show them the light. The light is for the Gentiles also. Illumination. Amen. 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 Point three. <laughs> <laughs> We're having us a good time. Okay, point three. A hope, hope 
for the nations. Ooh, through all the struggles. That's it. Through all the struggles. Yes, ma'am. It always brings us back. It brings us back to the oh, day. That's right. Through all the struggles, there is uh, hope. You going to read that? I'll read that. Isaiah gives the nation a glimpse of the servant's identity. I am the Lord. God will not give this name or his glory to any other because none is worthy but him. When Jesus claims himself to be the fulfillment of the prophecies, Luke 4, 16 through 21, and the early New Testament writers use this language when describing Jesus, Mark 1 and 11, it is clear confirmation that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah and Lord. Philippians say that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of Philippians 2:10 through 11. The word glory indicates the majesty and splendor of Almighty God. He alone is worthy to be praised. One interpretation of verse 9 is that everything we see will come to an end. Mm -hmm. Those institutions and systems that have created such havoc and confusion in our lives will be gone. Yes. Paul says these things we see are only temporal. And we cannot see, what we cannot see are the eternal and weighty things of God. Infinite glory. Inf yeah, infinite glory, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 18. The new things are what Jesus Christ has declared unto his people. <laughs> One day we shall see a new heaven, a new earth, where Jesus, God's servant, shall be known as Lord of all. Yeah. Revelations 21, 1, 1 and 2. We can trust God's word to us about the future when God reigns physically as he has reigned in our hearts today. He was faithful to his word in the past to deliver Israel. Mm -hmm. we, we see him delivering us today from sin and its effects. And we can trust his word that his kingdom come, his will be done in our future Justice and righteous judgment shall be for every person, and we will experience God's peace and love because He has promised to make all, all things, things new. new. Woo! Pastor, I think when I read that, I said, Pastor can do a little sermonette on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God will make all things God new. God will make all things new. Yes, so many things have already happened. Let's just see. Yeah. We want to go back here and just take a look at this because Isaiah gives the nation a glimpse of mm. the servant's identity. That's it. He talked about his identity, you know, that he was kind, he was humble, mm -hmm. he was compassionate and all the things. But then it says here, it's talking about his name. Mm. It says, I am the Lord. Okay. That's in verse 8. Verse 8. God will not give this name or his glory to any other because none is worthy. But only the servant who is Jesus mm -hmm. is worthy mm -hmm. of glory. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. He's yeah. the only one that's worth. Excuse me. Worthy. Mm -hmm. So if God says, I am the Lord, and this is his name, mm -hmm. and that he will give this name to no one else other than the servant because nobody is worthy. Nobody Let's is worthy. help us to know who he is. That's right. He is the word. He's he worthy. is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And, and, and Sister Carter, what what's so awesome about it is uh, he says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Now, one of the things that when you look throughout the Old Testament, come on, when <laughs> Moses is asking that question at that burning bush, who, who, who am I going to say sent me? Who am I going to say, uh, I, I, I'm coming to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. 
And God is telling him, say, say I am, that I am. That I am. Don't, 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 don't trip out on it. Just tell him I am. Tell him who I am. That I am. And here it is. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I'm the Lord. I'm here. And he's, he's, he's giving them a glimpse of his glory. Uh-huh. Letting them know, hey, he's worthy. He's worthy. Uh, and I'm wondering... Because Jesus, you know, he he did not, as he journeyed on earth, say, I'm coming to get the glory. But he always said, I came to glorify my Father. He always pointed to the Father. Who is That's in heaven. why I say you can't separate. You can't you can, separate. They're acceptable. Uh-uh. They're the same. Uh-uh. And he said, the glory I have, my father gives to me. Yeah. And then I give the glory back to my father. We just keep giving it back to one another. Because it's all one. God is God. <laughs> Jesus is God. Oh, yes, he is. God is God and Jesus, Jesus is God. God. Yeah. And there is another little section in here that talks mm. that talks about one day, mm. every knee. That's it. Every knee mm. shall bow. Where is that? Uh, yeah. Philippians says Philippians. that. Yeah, Philippians. Uh-huh. Philippians 2, 2, 10 and 11. That's right. Says, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall yeah, confess mm. that Jesus is Whew. Lord. Sister Carter, and, and that's a powerful verse of scripture. It is. It is. And you know me. I love illustrating. I love seeing I know seeing you do. It. Go ahead. This I so, picked this out for your sermon. <laughs> so we paint the picture. We paint the picture. Uh, uh, when you watch movies like King Arthur and they say the king is in and everybody has to fall down on bow their down. knee and bow down. But the, 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 the text says every knee shall bow and every, every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. One day. One day. So if you don't do it today mm-hmm. or tomorrow, you go one do, day. One day you will. One day you're going to know Jesus is Jesus and you're going to confess that he is. Now, as believers, we confess it with joy. Yes. We confess it and profess it and proclaim it. We don't mind bowing down and we do it with joy. But for the unbeliever, they still going to bow down. They still going to bow down. And confess. But that's why it's going to be gnashing of teeth. Better do it now. Jesus is Lord. Do it while you have a chance. Because Jesus is Lord. Oh, glory. He is Lord, He's Lord. of mine. That's right. Lord life. of all. Lord of our life. Yes. So when we get to that... Uh, that, that 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 thought that picture I, I you know I love painting the picture when you see that everyone has to bow every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess so why not accept him now and Jesus this this isn't something that Jesus told them when he was on his when he was on earth or when mm-hmm. he was on his way no. away this was written. 700 years <laughs> before, before Jesus before. was even born. Mm. So mm. it say, look at God. God doesn't, nothing is last minute uh-huh. for God. For God. And another thing about this, uh, and he says the servant is going to make everything new. So, talk uh, about that. Th- this, this really to the mess us up here. Talk about this. So he saw Jesus at 700 years. We in 2020. So he sees the new heaven and the new earth. When he sees him make it all new. So he's looking that way back. Way and way and forward. Way forward. Way. He's looking even beyond. So he sees Isaiah sees Jesus in his incarnation. He sees him uh, at his baptism. Yes. He sees him at his crucifixion. He sees him at the resurrection. And he sees him at his glorification. (laughs) 
My God. He sees. He sees. Him. He sees. Him. He sees. Oh, him. yeah. Woo. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, man. In that John chapter 8, man, I'm telling you, this thing is connecting the Bible study. When they asked Jesus, they asked Jesus, they said, How are you before Abraham? He said, Jesus said, Abraham and the prophets, they, 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 they rejoice when they saw me. So, you know, in my little mind, I'm thinking, Man, okay, Jesus, they seeing you get getting ready to come here and they rejoicing they they seeing you take off all your royal diadem to put on flesh like me uh -huh. and come here why are they rejoicing they're rejoicing because they know salvation is now coming to the world salvation is now coming i've been here all the time i've been here all the time i've been here but all salvation the time. salvation is, is coming. coming to the world yeah Yes. And it says uh, God reigned physically mm. in our hearts That's right. today. That's right. He's faithful to his word mm. in the past. He delivered Israel mm. in the past. So he was faithful to Israel. Yes. And we now see him delivering us from sin and sin effects. That's right. And I think Corona is a sin effect. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I a fact. Know. It's an effect. But we see God still taking care of us. That's we right. see, see God still delivering us from Whew. sin's effects. That's right. I, I, the 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 key is recognizing that it is God. Mm-hmm. See, uh -huh. we have to look and say, God, you're up to something. Yes. I think we said that in the beginning. God, speak to our hearts. Speak, speak to my heart. To my heart. Let me reflect. Let me resolve some issues. Uh -huh. Let me let me look introspectively at myself and say, God, what do I need to fix? Let me understand what I need to do. Many times we, you know can tell others what to do. Mm -hmm. But right now it's about what do I, I need, need to, to do. do. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And this also tells us that all things are going to be new. Mm. Sooner or later, Woo! all of this to be new. is that's happening now is going to be passed away. And all things are going to be new. Sister Carter, this is so interesting. And it just really clicked with me again when you just said it. Church is going to be new. All after things this. are going to be new. It's things be are not going to be, be the, same. the same. Now, here's the challenge Can we move into the new thing that God is doing and release the old? That's why. Look, That's a good question. Look at what we're doing. We're doing Sunday school in the kitchen. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. <laughs> we're cooking in the kitchen. We're cooking in the kitchen. We're feeding God's All word. All things will, will be, be new. new. And further than this. Yes. It talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Continuing. Yeah. Wow. A new heaven and a new earth. Yes. We're still looking, still, still looking, looking in the future. Still looking in the future. Look in the past. We come to the future. I think I made a note. Some things that, <laughs> some things that was prophesied have already happened. Have already happened. Mm -hmm. Already happened. Some things that were prophesied are happening right now. Mm -hmm. Some things are still to come. Yeah. Oh my. God. We call them uh. Uh, future, near future, uh -huh. distant future. Come on now. And far distant future. Get my theologian, <laughs> Sister Connie. Come on now. But Pastor, what we looking, really looking forward to now mm -hmm. is the distant future. Mm, that's it. Revelation, what is it? Revelation 21 tells us. Yes, yes. yes. That it's going to be a new heaven. A new heaven. And a new earth. And a new earth. Yes. Wow. And Jesus is going to rule the so same Lord. servant that we're talking about, that's right, that's right. but he's going to rule mm -hmm. as Lord. Mm -hmm. He is going to be in charge and justice and righteousness shall be for everyone. Mm -hmm. We know now sometimes Hallelujah. justice and righteousness is Come on. people over here, mm -hmm. people up there, people way out. 
the there, yeah, but right, right. justice we'll and righteousness everyone. will be for everyone. And that's the hope. That's and I the think hope. I think it calls it uh, the hope for that's the right. nation. That's right. The hope, yeah, for, the hope for the nation. There is hope. There are many things that we hope for to happen to us mm -hmm. right now. Good things. Good we thing. want to enjoy some good things. Right. But one thing that we can be for sure, if Isaiah prophesies that the servant was coming. 700 years down the road mm -hmm. and he came we can believe that heaven and earth will pass yeah. away yes and there'll be no come more on. sickness Ooh. no more viruses come running on, around come out on, there come no on. more troubles and whatnot That's right. so we still mm -hmm. looking we're looking yeah uh, uh, and, and and that that looking uh also puts a drive Yes. In you. I'm looking, but I'm running towards it. Yeah. I'm, I, it's in my future. I know it's there. You know, we, we, we say stuff like greater is coming, but I'm, I'm coming to greater too. I'm going towards it <laughs> as it's coming is towards coming. me. Yeah. So I, as I'm looking forward to what God is going to do, as he unveils his promises in my life, I also got to move towards mm -hmm. it. And our faith is stronger mm -hmm. because we know that what God has done, right. he can still do what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. That should remove a lot of doubt. The doubt should be gone. Yeah, and strengthen our faith. If he hadn't done anything in the past, That's right. if these prophets, uh, prophecies that have come to pass had not come, mm -hmm. then maybe we would have a right to have some doubt. Right, right. But we can have no doubt no because doubt. what he said he was going to mm -hmm. do. And see, God, it takes us back to God keeping his that's promise. It. That's it. That's he it. made a that's covenant. It. That's it. See, this is, everything is happening because this nation, Israel, mm -hmm. God had made a promise. A promise. So go into captivity, come out, yep, up and down, come out, that's do it. better, do worse, uh -huh. uh, fall into sin again. Right. All of the things that have happened, we can see that God promises is still intact. Oh, yes. Because yeah. he promised. He, that was his covenant. Yes, and covenant. God keeps his promise. However he has to do it, mm -hmm. God keeps his promise. And who, whoever he has to use, whoever he has to use, he'll do it. And I think one of the keys is... That's when you can learn to rest on the promises of God. Oh, yes. You can trust the promises of God. Oh, yes. You can believe the promises of God. As we say, the promises of God are yes and amen. <laughs> God, I trust in you for I trust your, your promise. promise. Because your promises come to pass. Come to pass. And I just, uh, this has been a really good lesson mm -hmm. and Pastor, thank you for, you know, for <laughs> us being able to share together. Yes. And those who listened to the lesson today, I just hope you out there have heard something that will encourage your hearts, inspire you. Trust God. That's it. In times like this, we need a Savior. Yes. In times like this, mm. we need an anchor. Hey God, come on now. Don't we? In times like this. In times like this, mm. we need a Savior. Yes. And I know there are many people who, you know, don't believe in God or they believe in God and feel that they can do it their own way or right. whatever. I just like to encourage everybody during these times. Look to God. Mm. He is the answer. Yes. And yes. he will get us through this. That's right. We hear many TV ads saying, what, we'll get through this together? Mm -hmm. Let's add a bit to that. We will get through this together by the, the grace, grace of, of God. God. By the grace we of don't God. Want, to, want to try to do anything mm -mm. without the grace no, of God. Not at all. Let us continue to pray together. Hallelujah. Love one another. Yes, ma'am. Study yeah. God's word. That's right. Apply God's word yes. and see if we can find out what it is God is saying to me. That's it. And what can I do? That's it. And whatever it is, God help me to do that. Help me to do it. Make it personal. Make it personal. Make it personal. 
Uh, Praise God. Sister Carter, it's been good. Praise God. Praise God. Bless you. Bless Pastor, you. you be careful. Yes, ma'am. You take care of yourself. I see you doing it. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Otherwise, I wasn't going to let you come by today. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play with it. Come kitchen, Pastor. Yes, you know, I'll play with it. I'll play with it. I'll play with it. Oh, <laughs> well, God. if it's anything else, you can, Let's you have can close prayer. us out and, and uh, pray for us that God will continue to cover us. Yes. God, we thank you. Mm. Mm. Your word has been rich to us today. Mm. Your word is still a light into our path. Mm. And sometimes when the way seems dark, Lord, we need to lean on your word even more. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would just continue to touch. Touch, Lord. Continue touch, to Lord. bless. Bless, Lord. Continue to deliver, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you sent Jesus to save us. Mm. And Lord, we need salvation. Yes, we God. need it in our hearts, our mind, yes, our soul, and in our yes, lives, God. Lord. Yes, God. God, I pray that this lesson will take root in our hearts, Lord, and that it manifest for your glory. And that you get all the honor, that you get all the praise, and you get all the glory. God bless Sister Carter. We thank you for it now. Thank you, Lord. Continue to bless her daughter, her family. Keep them. Glory, glory, glory. We pray, Lord, for, for Deacon Govan, Lord. And yes, Lord. Taran and all the family. Yes, touch Lord. them right now. Touch, Lord Jesus. Touch Rachel. Touch Amen. Touch Keep them in your Jesus. grace and love. Mitra, touch of Shamika, touch of God. Touch of God. Diamond, touch of touch God. Touch of God. God, we know you are able. We know touch you God. are able. Touch God. And God, we lean on your will. Yes, God. God, we say let your will be done. Yes, God. And we trust you, God. Father, continue to yes, bless God. every church, yes. every pastor. Yes. Around this world. Let your word go forward and come not back for it. Mm, in mm. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Since I laid. Yeah, I don't know when to shout. <laughs>